in this video i am going to talk about the property of stationarity this is an important property of a time series process uh, so when do we call a time series process as a stationary process okay so a random process or a stochastic process whatever you call it uh, is is known to be stationary when uh, the process uh, uh, or whose joint distribution doesn't uh, doesn't change over time okay so we define like this a random process whose joint distribution doesn't change over time uh, is known to be a stationary process so there are a couple of jargons we are uh, you know using in this definition one is the random process and the other one is the joint distribution right so what is a random process so if you're familiar with time series analysis any time series uh, any time series data is considered to be a stochastic process or a random process why so because the data points are uh, probabilistic in nature nobody can so random process is probabilistic in nature there is no certainty about it, uh, the future data right and uh, it's it's practically impossible to predict future accurately all the times uh, with 100% uh, accuracy uh, so you know it could be uh, the probability nature of uh, data points um, is known as uh, the random process it's also known as the non deterministics so we cannot have a formula simple formula to predict the future right so stock price example is one of the random process that means one cannot forecast future stock prices very accurately it's totally probabilistic in nature there is a high degree of probability associated with the future prices of the stock market the stocks and indexes so these are typical uh, random processes so what is joint distribution then the well, joint distribution is nothing but combination of more than two uh, distribution more than equal to two distributions when we always talk about a single distribution right you know we talk about one distribution being following this kind of distribution the other one is uh, you know following uh, let's say this type of distribution when we take one data point from here and one data another data point from here and jointly see how they uh, you know appear over a period of time we call that as a joint distributions so combining two, you know two or more uh, distribution uh, is known to be joint distribution let's say yt is a uh, you know is a price of stock uh, at time t and then yt minus 1 t minus s is another distribution for um, a time series and then let's say these two time series uh, take certain value let's say yt takes a value of 10 and yt minus 2 takes a value of uh, 12 so what is the probability of you know uh, both these time series taking these values again if you if you if you draw the distribution of that happening jointly that means both taking these values is known to be a joint distribution now we extend these two definitions random process and joint distribution to understand the stationarity property further by you know going into the details what is uh, strict stationary strict stationarity and what is weak stationarity or what is a strictly stationary process and what is uh, a weakly stationary process so what is the strict, strictly stationary process so if the joint distribution and we learned what is joint distribution in the previous slide right of a time series process remains same or unchanged over time right so when you see the joint distribution is not changing over time we call that as a strictly stationary process so let's take an example here so we've got two time series processes one is yt the other one is yt plus one t plus s let's assume that these two time series represents the stock price uh, of financial data some sort of a financial data so, so that you know it will be easier for us to uh, relate because stock prices are you know very popular time series or uh, uh, time series data so easier to relate okay so yt and yt plus s are two time series we have with us and it takes these two time series takes value uh, different values uh, at three different time period t1 t2 and 3 t3 yt takes values of 200 220 and 2 
31 respectively for T1, T2 and T3 and T, T, uh, Yt plus S takes value of 180, 195 and 210, right? So this is the data given to us. Now we define probability 1 as probability of Yt, that means the first one, taking a value of 200, this values, and then Yt plus S taking a value of 180. 180. So that we call that as P1, probability 1. Probability 2 is nothing but uh, Yt taking value of 220 and Yt plus S taking a value of 190. So that's your probability 2. Similarly, probability 3 or P3 is nothing but probability of Yt taking 231 and Yt plus S taking 210. Right? So these two values. Now, if P1 equal to P2 equal to P3, that means probability of joint distribution y, uh, Yt taking certain values and Yt plus S taking certain values for the same period, exactly same as for time period 2, for time period 3, we call that as a strict distributional process. That means the probability distribution is not changing over period of time. It is remaining same. The joint probability is remaining same over period of time over t1 t2 t3 up to t infinity right for all the periods and we call that as strictly stationary process if if this condition is met this condition is satisfied then we call this process uh, we uh, we call uh, yt and yt plus s uh, of course this is only one uh, series you know, uh, so Yt is known to be a strictly stationary series. Then we define what is known as weakly stationary series, also known as the covariant stationary series. So weakly stationary series is defined like this. The expectation of Yt should be uh, constant. That means the mean of expectation of something is nothing but the mean. So mean of the time series Yt is constant. And then the variance of the time series also is constant. Okay. And the third one is the autocovariance of this time series also uh, constant and it depends on um, uh, it, it depends on only the difference of the time. It's not constant. Uh, it depends only on uh, the difference of time t1 minus t2. And we will understand uh, with little further discussion. Okay, so these are the three conditions to be made for a weakly stationarity. Now, how is it different from strictly stationarity? Well, when all these three conditions are met, the probability distribution still uh, could still differ, right? In the strictly stationary case, we uh, we learned that the probability distribution, joint probability distribution, has to be same throughout all time periods but that is very strict criteria but in weak stationarity that's not the criteria it has been slightly you know relaxed that only the mean has to be constant uh, and the variance has to be uh, constant and the autocovariance should only depend on the difference in the time periods now all the properties are also met in the strictly stationary case so all weakly stationary, uh, uh, all strictly stationary series are also weakly stationary, but not the way the other way around. Okay, so we'll understand the third point here, which is slightly complicated, that how autocovariance depends only on, only on the difference in the time. Okay, so autocovariance should be uh, ideally be uh, dependent on only the difference in the uh, time taken for the data. Okay for it to be called as weakly stationary. So what does that mean? So when you take autocovariance, yt and yt minus 1, so the difference is only 1, right? t and t minus 1. So the difference is only one time period, right? Hence, it has to be equal to autocovariance of t minus 5, yt minus 5, and yt minus 6. So y t minus 5, and then y t minus 6. So difference is again one time period. So the autocovariance for this two uh, series should be exactly equal as autocovariance for these two series, right? Similarly, the autocovariance of t minus seven and then t minus eight, 
when difference is only one should exactly equal to these two. Okay, that means the auto covariance only depends on the difference in the times, different in the time period, right? So if time period difference is one, any time given time, you know, t is equal to five, t one is equal to five, t two is equal to six, t one is equal to seven, t two is equal to eight. The difference is one. So for all these, uh, you know, groups, the auto covariance should be exactly same. Similarly, an auto covariance for uh, difference uh, delta t is equal to three. That means y t and y t plus three delta t is three. So everywhere you have a difference in time is a three delta t, which is difference of time periods is three, should exactly be same, right? So that's the third property, and which is slightly uh, complicated to understand. The first two are uh, easy. So that's uh, all about uh, the stationarity condition, uh, which is, is a very popular condition, terminology in the time series analysis. And it has got two parts, strictly stationary and weakly stationary. Strictly stationary is not a very uh, you know, mandatory thing in the time series analysis, whereas weakly stationary, which is uh, you know, found in most time series uh, data like stock prices, uh, strictly stationary is not actually a realistic thing uh, in in uh, real scenarios. So weekly stationary is actually very important and uh, uh, you know studied very uh, keenly uh, in time series analysis data. So for more videos, subscribe to our channel.